Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome to Indie Interactive, where we talk about making great music, connecting with your audience, and growing your business. My name is Bree Noble, and today we are talking about the ever popular topic how to sell our music without being salesy. I hear from musicians all the time. I don't even like to mention that my music is for sale. I feel really uncomfortable about it. It's, I feel pushy. I feel sleazy, all of those things. And I don't want you guys to feel that way. I want to make sure that you guys feel confident when you are talking about your music and selling your music. So that's what we're going to be talking about today on Indie Interactive. And I see a few of you already showing up. While you're showing up, I want to mention, um, it's been a very busy morning for me today because I have released the first episode of three episodes of the Women of Substance Music podcast. It's all about the Me Too topic. And these, let me tell you, these songs are powerful. All of you guys need to listen to this show and I hope you share it because these songs and the stories within these songs and the emotions that they bring up and the people that put out these songs, they're so brave. And I was just blown away when I got the songs for creating these Me Too episodes. And, you know, they cover everything from Um, hiding and fear and shame to actually confronting somebody that has has wronged us or violated us the physical and visceral um, you know experience of being violated um, just everything from that to the way we respond to it the anger the um, you know outpouring of emotion, the rallying around each other as we try to heal and restore from these kind of experiences. So I really hope that if you haven't seen my post about it already, that you go out and check out these this episode and the future episodes coming out on Wednesday and Friday from this Me Too series. You can listen directly on wospodcast.com. You can go to wosradio.com and um, Click the podcast menu and it will show you all the places you can go to listen. You can go to iTunes. You can go to Stitcher if you're on Android. You can go to TuneIn. You can go to Spotify. You can actually listen on YouTube if you prefer to listen there. Um, But if you go to those other places, be sure and subscribe so you can get future episodes. And I know that um, many people that watch this show, Indie Interactive, and maybe here today, are featured on one of these episodes. So I'm just excited to be featuring these shows and I love seeing all of you guys show up. So I want to say hi to Denise and Jesse and Robin and Sue. That is who I see. Oh, and, and ah, Char, I miss you. I'm so glad you're here. Char and Beth and uh, Sarah. So awesome to see you guys today. Just want to make sure you guys can all see me and hear me before I get into this awesome content. Great. Looks like um, I'm not seeing any comments that you can't hear me or can't see me. So, um, oh, and I see that I don't have the slide that I wanted right there on the screen. So let me go. Supposed to be that slide. So I'll wait for that to come up. Um, This is going to be a point that I get to later, but um, let me just get this. There we go. This is our topic today. How to make money selling music online and at live shows without being salesy. And like I said, I'm going to be going into a, a new series where I'm talking about sales and how we can execute this in a lot of different ways, because Obviously, I know you guys want to sell your music. So um, let's get into this topic today. I'm just going to jump in here and make sure I don't see anything crazy. (laughs) Oh, Char says, I miss you too. Thank you. I'm so glad you're here. Um, Cool. Okay. Looks like we're all good. So I'm going to start with our content, which 
let me just give you a preview here as far as the way I want to talk about sales. What I want you to know about sales is if you're doing your marketing right, then sales is a piece of cake. You really don't even need to think about sales because the sale happens, the pre-sale happens in the marketing. So if you are doing a good job marketing your music, they've already decided whether they're going to buy it or not by the time they get to the point of sale. So there is no need to be pushy and sleazy and salesy and feel like, you know, we need to convince them or persuade or cajole or any of that stuff because we've done a good job marketing. They've already decided that they're going to buy it. Sometimes they've decided they're going to buy something, but they don't know what it is. And then we just point them in the right direction. And sometimes they, you know, know exactly what they want to buy when they get to your merch table or when they go to your online store. And so you don't even need to worry about convincing them in any direction. So that's the most important thing I want you to get out of this, that we don't even need to be salespeople. What we need to be is good marketers and good promoters and the sales will take care of themselves as long as we let people know that we have things for sale and how to get them. So I think part of the problem is because we feel so worried about being salesy and pushy that we don't even tell people how they can buy because we feel like just the act of that is being pushy. And let me just explain that if you've done your marketing right, you're doing them a disservice, not telling them how they can buy because they already want to buy. They just need to know how to do it. So I want you to definitely get that idea into your head. So I'd love to know in the chat, um, what are some of the mindset things that are holding you guys back from sales? What is it that you don't like about um, quote selling? And I want to basically change your mind about what selling is because like I said, we need to focus on the pre-sell, not the sales. The marketing is the pre-sell. If you do it right, they've already been pre-sold on buying something. They just need to know how to actually do the transaction. So then it just becomes giving them the correct call to action. So how do we market correctly? I know you're thinking that, right? Okay, well, if it's all about the marketing, then how do I make sure that I do that right? So when they get to the point of sale, it's just automatic. They just do it, right? So maybe the idea of marketing is scary to you. Maybe you're thinking, oh, I don't have a degree in marketing. I don't know anything about it. I've never been educated in that area. All marketing is, is telling stories and creating experiences. So if you get them excited about your music by telling stories and creating experiences that they want to then continue with and they want to remember, then that is all you need to do to do good marketing. Um, it's not about, you know, being super flashy or having the absolute perfect message or anything like that. What's the most important thing in your marketing is authenticity. So you don't need to be super hypey and feel like, you know, you need to act like a quote marketer to get your message out there. All you need to do is be yourself, tell the stories that go with your music and, you know, make sure that that's connecting with them. So one way that you can do that, that is really important is to show, not tell. And I'm sure maybe you guys have heard that in relation to lyric writing, show, don't tell, right? If you, if you try to tell a story versus show, um, you know, maybe put the people in the scene and really get nitty gritty on what this setting the scene and what it looks like and all that stuff. If you show and don't tell, you're going to get pull people in so much better. And it's the same thing with your sales. So 
if you're trying to get them to buy music, the best way to do that is to show them an amazing performance. So they want to take that home with them. So obviously um, doing a variety of the songs that are on your CDs, you know, I, I see so many people, they're so excited about doing the newest songs that they've written that they um, want to perform those and they, they're already bored of the songs that are on their CDs, but then they expect people to buy their CDs, even though they didn't perform hardly any of the songs on there. I mean, I get that. Like by the time you've made your CD and you've put it out there, we are pretty sick of those songs, right? But we have to know that it's totally new to our audience. It may be boring to us, but we need to bring that to life for them and we need to be okay with that. And we can't expect them to buy our CDs if they go into the back and they start looking at the CD and they're like, I don't recognize any of these songs. Did you perform any of these? No, no, I performed all my new songs, but um, you know, these are, these are my songs I recorded last year. They're not going to want to buy that. So you need to make sure, and it, there's nothing wrong with doing new songs, but you need to make sure that you're putting in your old songs. In fact, make sure that you put in a song from each of the CDs that you want to sell in some way, because I've had experiences where someone's connected with one particular song that I did, and it's from an old CD. And, you know, they'll be like, well, I wanted this song. And I say, well, you know, it's not on my new CD, but if you buy, you know, this package, or you can get, you know, buy one, buy two CDs for $25, then you can be sure to take home that song as well that you liked that was from my older CD. So that's one way that you can show them that they wanna buy your music. Um, another way is actually physically showing it at, on stage. I mean, make sure that you bring a copy of your CDs up there and hold it up and show it to them. I can't tell you how many times when I didn't do this, people come to the back and they're like, now, which was that song you did? And what, you know, and they're trying to figure it out. Whereas if I had been on stage and say, okay, this is the title track to my song, Healing Waters, and hold up the CD and show them what it looks like, they would know exactly what they wanted to buy when they got to the back because they knew they wanted that particular song. So make sure that you do that. Another way is that you can give CDs away. That gets people really excited about them because if you give a CD away, then they're thinking the whole time, oh, maybe I'm going to be the owner of this CD. And they already start to think of themselves as someone who owns this CD because they want to win. And when they don't win, they're still thinking in the back of their mind, well, I was expecting to have this CD and to be able to listen to it on the way home or, you know, put this music on my iPod. And so that's going to make them more likely to go to the back and buy your CD when you are at a live show. Now you can do all of this stuff on online um, performances as well. So make sure that you don't forget to utilize these same techniques when you're performing online. Um, and we'll get in a minute to how do we direct them to buy. But the biggest thing I want you guys to get is the most important thing about sales is pre-selling them on it so you don't have to do the heavy lifting later. The marketing does the heavy lifting. So I'm just going to come kind of check in the chat here and see what people are saying. Um, cool. Thank you, Shar. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Awesome. Should we hold up other merch? Absolutely. So, I mean, because I titled this being about music, I didn't mention, but it's absolutely the same with other merch. Hold up your merch, wear your t-shirt on stage. I mean, it might not match the kind of show that you're doing, so maybe you won't, but get someone in the audience, get a plant to wear your t-shirt so you can point them out. Um, give a t-shirt away, maybe show, throw a t-shirt out into the audience once. Um, same thing. Yes, I'm, in a, I'm absolutely going to get to that in a minute, um, Sue, about how we tell them what to do. It's so important that we educate them. So let's see, Sue says, if they say no, I feel like they're rejecting me. 
Yeah, it's the same thing as what we were talking about last week with the rejection. There's <clears throat> so many other reasons why they could be saying no that had nothing to do with you. Um, you know, they're having financial difficulty. They might still really want it, but they can't afford it. Maybe they forgot to bring any form of money with them. Maybe, you know, there's so many, hey, Tony, how's it going? Um, there's so many reasons that have nothing to do with you that they may be saying no. So definitely don't take that personally. I am searching around for my cough drop because I think I'm going to need it. Oh, we go. I don't know how you guys are doing, but I am having a serious issue this week with sickness um, and trying to get over a cough and just feeling rather crappy. So hope you guys are faring better than I am. Um, let's see. That's interesting. So Shar says, bottom line is, I feel like they're already there contributing. So they feel like they would have to, um, would have to buy. And yeah, I mean, I guess, I guess I get that, but sometimes they're having such a great experience that they want another way to give back. They want another way to say thank you. And if you don't offer them the ability to buy something, you're actually kind of robbing them of that experience. And I've experienced that more than once where people are like, you know, I just, I really want to support you. And if you don't give them more ways to support you, then you're kind of robbing them of that ability to, you know, give back in a way that makes them feel really good about it. Hey, Anne-Marie. Hi to Robin, and let's see who else just showed up. Great conversation you guys are having here. Let's see. Um, yes, perfect. So Sue said that she had people sign up for her newsletter so people could be notified when the recording is ready. Absolutely. If you don't have a recording ready, then the best, best thing to do, as she said, is to get people to sign up for your newsletter so they can support you when it comes out. Because otherwise you'll have no way to let them know when the newsletter, I mean, when the, when the recording is done because you're never gonna see them again, potentially. Okay, so let's get into more things. And as um, we were talking about show, don't tell, Definitely one big thing to do is to tell stories. If you tell stories that relate to your songs, it really, really solidifies and cements your songs with the people because it gives them something to anchor onto, a story that maybe they can relate to or they can remember. And a lot of times they want to continue to remember those stories and take them home with them by buying your CDs or your merch. So make sure that you're telling stories that relate to your songs. And um, a lot of times, you know, when I tell stories, I make sure to say, you know, this song is on this CD. So people know how they can buy that song that is related to that story that they want to remember. Now, as for, and, and another thing people do too is, they love the experience of the concert so much that they want to share it with their friends, the friends that couldn't make it or aren't there. Or a lot of times, you know, people will say like, oh, I have a friend that she's, you know, she's been really sick or she has cancer or she can't go out. And I want to share this with her and they'll buy CDs for those friends. So if you create an experience that they love and they want to share, obviously they can't reproduce that experience for their friend but this is the closest thing that they can do and they'll do it. Okay, so educate your audience. And what I mean by that is what I think Sue was saying here in the comments is we need to let them know how they can support us because they want to and help them understand what buying a CD or buying your music online does for you. <clears throat> you need to educate them in a way of not sounding like a starving artist 
but also explain to them that, you know, you consider people that buy your music patrons of your art and they are helping support you continuing to create your art. So make sure that you are letting them know how important their purchase is to you and how it sustains you and your art. And when you frame it that way, it's really hard for them to say no. <coughs> this is an interesting experiment of seeing how long I can talk before it absolutely activates my cough. All right, so my next point, and this one is so important and something that people just completely forget is to make sure you announce it multiple times during a live or online show. <clears throat> I think I just feel like we said it once and that's plenty and people heard us. Let me tell you, most people didn't hear you. It, it, people, things are going on. They're looking at their phone. They're talking to people. They're thinking about something else. You know, don't assume that they heard you the first time. Don't assume that they even heard you the second time. I always make sure to talk about it near the beginning, in the middle, and at the end, absolutely at the end. And if you're in a live situation, point, point to where they can buy stuff, hold things up show them, show, don't tell. So, I mean, show and tell at this point, um, direct them. They need to be directed. And I can tell you that even though, you know, you said everything from the stage, at least three times, someone will come back to your merch table and ask you the very same questions again. So don't feel bad about telling them several times, same thing with an online performance. If you've got a PayPal button or you've got a special link they can go to to buy, make sure to say that many times. Make sure to put it in the chat many times. Don't feel bad about that. People, especially online, are coming in and out. They're not hearing and seeing everything that you do. People are coming in and out right now. And hopefully they'll watch the replay so they can, you know, hear all the points that I made. But, you know, don't assume that people will. So make sure that you are saying it multiple times and don't feel like you're being salesy or pushy with that. You're just making sure that they have the information. That's all you're doing. Now, this is a big one and this is a very big mindset shift that I want you to really, really dig into. Assume they want to buy in the way that you announce it. So assuming you're not, you're not saying, Hey, please buy, you know, trying to convince them in your announcement. All of your announcement is, is to say, I know you want this thing. Here's how you get it. And obviously don't say it like that, but that is what needs to be in your mind. In your mind, you need to be thinking, okay, now I need to direct all the people that I know are, have been moved through my marketing and are at the pre-sell stage and all they need to do is know how to execute, that is what you're doing with your announcement. So you need to say, when you come to the merch table, you know, you might consider buying two CDs because it will be a discount. You know, we've got two for 25, you know, three for 35, four for 40 or however you do it. Or, you know, when you come to the merch table, you know, since you're already thinking of buying a CD, you, you might consider buying this package instead because you'll also get this awesome t-shirt, you know, and, and hold it up. So instead of starting with, if you want to buy or if you come to the merch table, just approach it as when, and it will make all the difference. It will put you in a position of confidence. It will make you more attractive because you don't sound like you're begging or that you're unsure if what you have available is worth them buying. You know it is. And that is another thing. If you're confident in what you have for sale, if you know people love it, then you need to express that in the way that you announce what it is that you have available. Because that is so attractive that even if someone hadn't been thinking of buying before, 
they're thinking, oh, people want this stuff. Maybe I want this stuff. So it's all about that social proof. And you're expressing that through the way that you announce it. <coughs> so sales become a call to action to get someone what they already want. So all it is, is you're directing them that this is how you get it. And, you know, we need to make sure that even on our websites, that the copy speaks that way. It doesn't say, if you want to buy, you know, it says, go to my, go to my store and buy X, Y, Z, or, you know, it just needs to approach it from a position of confidence. So before I start hacking away, I'm going to stop talking and see what you guys are saying in the chat here. Hey, Annie. Hey, Christina. Let's see what you guys have to say about what I've said. And, and yeah, chime in if you have any opinions about what I've said. If, I mean, if you think I'm wrong, totally put it in there. I'd love to hear it. If you think that maybe it's just really hard to execute this, I'd love to hear that. Let's see. Don't forget to do this at open mics too, Sue says. Use every opportunity to build your fan base. Absolutely. Yeah, man, Sue is on fire. She's just like booking like crazy and just putting herself out there. I love to see that. Good morning, Catherine. I like the way you recommend we frame it. Good. Helps us sustain our art and then they are a patron. Yes. We really need to think like the old school model because so many people are sustaining their art nowadays through Patreon, through crowdfunding um, and, and just frame it that way. And I think if you frame it that way, it, it really, really helps them put it into perspective that they're not just buying a thing, you know, because so many people nowadays, we have so many things, like we don't need another thing, right? But it's supporting our art. And sometimes people either will say, you know what, I don't need another CD, but here's a 20 because I want to give it to you. Or they'll, they'll decide to buy a CD for a friend in order to support me and also because they think they can bless a friend with the music. Um, do folks in retirement homes buy CDs? I think it's very hit or miss there. It depends on what kind of a retirement home you're talking about. I mean, if you're talking about like convalescent, probably not. Um, if it's like one of those really nice retirement communities, absolutely. Um, I think they do still buy CDs. I have a lot of older fans that have bought CDs at, you know, senior centers and things. Um, you need to let them have another opportunity to say thank you. Yes. Yes. I mean, buying something from you is like another opportunity to say thank you. And, you know, it's the same thing with like, I've experienced this at my church actually, where we've done a concert and the people on our, our team that are planning it are like, do you think it's okay if we put a donation basket or take it? I'm like, you guys, like people are going to love this so much. They're going to want an opportunity to say thank you. And if you don't give them an opportunity to give back in some way, if there's nothing they can buy, at least offer them the opportunity to give a donation. If not, you're robbing them the opportunity of saying thank you in a way that's tangible for the experience that we've created. So you really need to think of it that way. Hey, Molly, how's it going? Patreon has been such a game changer. Oh, I know. I know. Are you using it, Molly? Or are you just saying in general for the, um, for the industry? Hey, Linda. Um, I love seeing all your guys' comments. This is great. Um, <clears throat> just let me know if you have any further questions. Otherwise, I am going to rest my voice soon because it's amazing to find out how weak it is with this cough hanging out in the background. Um, again, if you missed the beginning, I just wanted to mention again that the, um, <coughs> the Me Too series 
for Women of Substance podcast is coming out this week and it is it is amazing. It is mind-blowing um, the way these stories are told through music. And so I just want to make sure that you guys know um, that it's there, that you can support your fellow artists by listening and sharing. And you can listen at wospodcast.com. You can go to wosradio.com and um, click on the podcast menu to find all the ways that you can, you know, connect on iTunes and Stitcher and tune in and YouTube and all that um, and subscribe and please share with, with the women that I think that, you know, that you can, that can benefit from this. Um, pineapple juice. I know Jesse, I did try that. I ran out of pineapple juice. I actually opened a can of pineapple chunks and drank the juice. Cause I was desperate the other day, but I forgot to get some at the store. Um, so yeah, I need to go get some more pineapple juice from my voice. Um, <clears throat> Molly says that she is using Patreon, which is awesome. I'm so excited. I actually want to, would love to talk to you about that in the Academy, Molly. Um, you're paying your mortgage with it. That is fan freaking tastic. <laughs> I'm so happy for you. Um, let's see. I prefer whiskey. I know. Well, unfortunately, I do have a few more things I have to do today for work. So whiskey will probably not work, but I can absolutely have it today at, after five. <laughs> and I probably will. Um Last night, I, last night, I took some version of NyQuil and man, was I out. I was like solid out for six hours. So I thank God for, uh, for drugs sometimes. <laughs> All right, you guys, it's been so great to hang out with you. I hope these um, sales reframes have been helpful. And I'm going to continue to be doing a series about how we can promote and sell our music um, in a little more practical sense over the next few weeks, but I wanted to set us up for success with making sure that we understand that sales is mostly done in the marketing and we don't ever have to feel like we need to be pushy and salesy and sleazy and, and uncomfortable and, um, you know, persuas persuaders. Our music and our stories are what persuade people are showing, not telling is what persuades people to buy. And then they'll be in that state, that pre-sell state. And all we need to do is direct them what to do in order to place the transaction. So feel comfortable in that. And also know that um, if you approach it in the mindset of when they buy, not if they buy and the mindset of most people do want to support you in some way, then that will really help you in the way you talk about things that people can purchase. So keep that in mind. And I'd love to find out how you guys are using all of this um, in your day-to-day -day sales. So let me know if any of this um, really has helped you change your mindset about sales. I'd love to hear your stories you can always email me directly and let me know. I always love to know if, you know, what I'm teaching is how it's working in the wild. So be sure and let me know. You guys have a fantastic day and continue to make great music, connect with your audience and grow your business. Thanks for being on Indie Interactive today. See ya.